In this video, hints of the upcoming Siri, new visual intelligence features, hints of upcoming Apple intelligence integration with shortcuts, upcoming enhancements to the iOS built-in screen recording and streaming feature, including live camera, stereo microphone audio, and more, repeated calculations with the calculator app, and so much more. This is iOS Decoded for iOS 18.3, Release Candidate. So here we are, iOS 18.3. It's a full download, not a Delta update because it is the release candidate, which brings improvements to visual intelligence along with other enhancements, bug fixes, security updates, etc. So with that being said, let's hop over to settings general about, and you can see there iOS version 18.3. Let's grab the build number. That is going to be 22D60. And that's important because if the final version that's released to the public next week is the same build number, it's going to be the same exact release as the release candidate. So just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about some of the fixes. Obviously there's going to be a lot of bug fixes and a lot of security updates. We'll have more on that later on nine to five Mac, but one of the fixes has to do with the type to Siri interface where the keyboard wouldn't show when invoking it. And obviously that kind of defeats the point of type to Siri if the keyboard isn't showing. So that will be fixed if you ever encountered that in previous versions of iOS. And it also resolves an issue where audio playback continues to happen even if you close out of the music app. So that's kind of a weird bug. And that is going to be resolved here in iOS 18.3 as well. So Here's where it gets interesting. So for new users or those upgrading to iOS 18.3, Apple intelligence will be opt out, meaning it's going to be enabled from the jump. There is no need to go in and enable Apple intelligence for those updating. Now, depending on your opinion about Apple intelligence, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but unlike previous releases, Apple intelligence is enabled from the jump. Now, the problem with that, at least for people that have never used Apple intelligence or maybe don't even know what it is, it's gonna be a little bit surprising to have this brand new Siri interface and some other new features. And of course, this will be limited to the iPhone 16 and iPhone 15 Pro devices. Now, speaking of Siri, the big update for iOS 18.4 is the new Siri automation stuff. Some of the groundwork is being laid in iOS 18.3, but they are disabled by feature flags, but conditional engine directly relates to this. So here's what we can expect from 18.4. Number one, new app actions. Apple says Siri will be able to perform hundreds of new actions in Apple apps without even having to open those apps. Number two, personal context knowledge. Like a real life assistant, you'll be able to reference texts you've received, past calendar events, and personal data to get truly intelligent assistance. And then three, on-screen awareness. Siri will know what's on your display so you can easily ask it to take action on whatever you're looking at. So that is coming soon. The groundwork's being laid. And there's new strings and shortcuts UI code that hint at Apple intelligence. So basically there are a couple of strings or a few strings in here. We see share this shortcut with Apple. That's one string that we found. Here's another string, help Apple improve shortcuts and Apple intelligence using the content of your shared shortcuts. And then finally shared shortcuts may be used to generally improve Apple products and services in a way that does not personally identify you. Now there are also new visual intelligence features in 18.3. So of course that's invoked using the camera control button on iPhone 16 era devices. For instance, you can hold it in, in front of a flyer or an event calendar like this, and then it will recognize that. And with one tap, you can create a calendar entry with all the pertinent data from that flyer or whatever the case may be into your calendar app. So I just tap schedule. Now, if I mosey on over to the calendar app, you're going to actually find that calendar event right there. There it goes on the 29th, just like the flyer said, I use the word flyer, quote unquote, my chicken scratch, but here you can even see the notes are in there. It even has an image of the event just like that for reference. Pretty cool new feature, but that's not where visual intelligence enhancements stop. It can now easily identify plants and animals. In this case, we're going to just going to use a little plant that I have right here. Just put it right here. And eventually you'll see a little pop-up and there we go. So it recognizes it, tap on it for more information, just like that. So this is separate from the chat GPT slash Google reverse image search in visual intelligence it automatically pops up within the VI UI. Like I did that, don't you? 
So the calculator app, of course, with iOS 18, it, it lost the ability to swipe to delete, but you have that delete button now, so you can't do that. But it did gain something new in, well, not new, but it brought something back in 18.3, the ability to repeat a calculation just by pressing the equal button over and over and over. So repeat that operation, plus 22, plus 22, plus 22. That is a nice feature to have back finally. I think a lot of people were clamoring for that and Apple listened and brought it back. Now, if we can get swipe to delete back, you're going to make a whole lot of people happy, Apple. I've seen that request numerous times on my timeline. Now, you also have notification summaries that we talked about in the previous video, but basically this is a, this has always been a beta feature, but as you know, it has its fair share of issues. Well, Apple is basically now highlighting the fact that summaries may contain errors They've always stated that they've always notified that this is a beta feature, but now they're making it front and center. No question about it. This is beta. In fact, right here, the text, you could see it. This beta feature will occasionally make mistakes that could mis misrepresent the uh, meaning of the original notification. And this is particularly bad if it's a news alert. We've seen that happen numerous times. In fact, I saw one today that was inaccurate. Well, Apple now in 18.3 is disabling that entire category for summary notifications because yeah, it's not always accurate and it can really misrepresent that news organization. So you can see there in the red, temporarily unavailable summaries will be automatically appear when available. So basically if you enable that here, once that feature is re-enabled, it will automatically be re-enabled. You don't have to do anything. And then the updated italic style here on the lock screen helps you to know that you're looking at a summary versus looking at an actual notification. So of course, you always have that little icon there, the little summary icon, but now you see the italicized text to go along with it. Just so at a glance, you can quickly discern, hey, this is a summary. This is not an actual notification. So hopefully people realize that, but I don't think a lot of people are going to realize that that just aren't in the know. With, like, obviously, if you're watching this channel, you know the difference, but I don't think just your normal user is going to know that even with the italics. What do you guys think? As you saw there, you also have the ability to turn off those summarized notifications just simply by swiping on the notification bundle and then selecting option and then disabling or turning off the summaries. Now, the thing is you can't actually turn that back on from the same option screen. You have to go back into the settings for that particular app and then re-enable summarized notifications. Apple fixed a bug there as well, where it wasn't actually showing disabled in the previous beta three. So that's nice. So here you can see I re-enabled that and it's now back on. So there's also more qualitative feedback for notification summaries that will be apparently in an upcoming version. You can see how would you rate the quality of this summary? So that's nice. And here's a new zoom transition for the shortcuts app. Notice this, this is how it looks currently and just kind of slides up. And notice the zoom transition now that you get in shortcuts. That's really nice. That's actually coming to messages as well. FYI, little birdie told me that. A future version of iOS will bring updated screen recording slash streaming features to the table. So this is the screen recording interface that we have right now. So basically allowing you to either start a screen recording or to even start a broadcast or a stream. You can obviously enable your, your microphone, but here in an updated version, you're gonna be able to have a live camera view in sort of a picture in picture overlay, but not just that you have stereo microphone functionality and HDR support for screen recordings. So that's really cool. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at iOS 18.3 release candidate. Let me know what you guys think down below. And if you appreciate deep dives like this with behind the scenes info, then leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more. This is Jeff with nine to five Mac.